Lord be with you. May the word of God always be on our mind, our lips, and in our heart. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you are coming to me. Jesus said to him, reply, Allow it now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill the righteousness. And then he allowed him, and after Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened for him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And a voice came from the heavens saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Lord. <laughs> Friday I received a uh, letter from Archbishop New and Archbishop Leonard Blair, uh, telling me that I've been reassigned for Sacred Heart for another year, for 2014. So you're going to have to put up with me for another year. <laughs> Your appreciation, we won't have a third collection. <laughs> but it's a real privilege. And when I was thinking about the fact of my being, uh, the responsibility of bring, being a pastor, one who brings the good news of Christ to others, and my pr primary attitude is to live as if this were the last day of my life in the parish. So do whatever I could for the last day to bring the love of Christ and the life of Christ to you. And it reminded me of the expression what happened to me at my baptism. The vows that I were given to me on uh, March 5th, 1933 at uh, 1.30 Holy Cross Church in Britain. And I looked at my birthday, which is February, February 18th, just a hint, uh, February 18th, and I was baptized two weeks later. And it dawned on me why I was baptized so quickly, because my little sister, Mary Ann, died very shortly after she was born. I was the last of the four. And um, my mother had twins, Mary Ann and Florence. Florence lived, but my sister Mary Ann died shortly after birth. And I don't know if they got, were able to baptize her. Maybe she was baptized at the hospital in Britain. But it dawned on me why I was baptized so quickly. It's not necessary, but my mother must have been awful afraid. But with that baptism, I came a tremendous amount of responsibility. Just as being a, a, a pastor of Sacred Heart is a free gift from the church, where I share the life of Christ and the sacraments of Christ and the life of Christ, your life together. So baptism is really a full free gift to us, which we do not deserve. Just like I don't deserve to be a pastor, so none of us deserve to be baptized and to receive the sacrament of baptism and the grace of baptism. There are no preconditions for receiving baptism. That's why we baptize children so early. That's why I was baptized two months after I was born. Yes, there's no requ uh, requirements. And that is why babies get baptized as soon as possible. St. Paul says, God shows no partiality. So all of us are called to be baptized. And what is the grace of baptism? Well, how do you spell grace? Anybody know how to spell grace? G for God, R for riches, A for at, C for Christ, and E for expense. Expect, at Christ's expense. Yes, the grace is a special gift from God at Christ's expense because he ended up dying on the cross. And the grace called sanctified grace. So sanctifying grace is really, what does sanctified mean? To make holy. So when you are baptized, you become holy. Not for anything you do for the rest of your life, but your holiness comes because you share in sanctifying grace, which is God's life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not only do we share, but you also get the ability and desire to love. What comes with God? God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in that person. So at baptism, you are welcomed into the church. You're initiated into the church. 
the official welcoming into the church, and you also receive two wonderful graces, that of sanctifying grace that makes you holy, and the power to love. And the love of God and the life of God was given to us at Christ's expense. And because of Christ's suffering and death, we receive the greatest gift that we possibly can have, the life of God. And makes us all children of God so we can call God our Father, Abba, a daddy. And through baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ. That's your official welcoming into your church. Baptism is the official welcoming of children into the family of God. And in baptism, it helps us share the life of Christ and helps us overcome the death of sin, the death of original sin, and the, that we inherit at our birth. As baptism is the door that opens to the eternal life. Through baptism, we now know that we're going to live forever. God's life through God's love towards us, and especially through the, those who are overlooked or marginalized in our life. Now, it is not only in our world, but also in our family. Who are those who are marginalized? Who are those really who are really, really poor and have been overlooked? Well, those who are without food. So we have our food share this coming Friday. Those who are without clothing and clothes, and we clothe the whole family to six, a 14, 15 year old, a nine year old, didn't have hats, didn't have clothes, didn't have gloves during this winter. Yes, who are the poor? Those who have lost their jobs. Those who are looking for jobs, as I talked to someone before Mass. Who are the poor? Those whose houses have been foreclosed. Those who want, you know, a lady who came to me and called me on the phone, Father, I want to talk to you, I'm getting a divorce. Yes, there are poor in many, many different categories. And also those in our own family who are poor. Now, who are they poor? The poor, the poor, is who, poor people are those who are without love. Those who are without love. And Francis, Pope Francis says, not to share our wealth, our love with the poor, not to share our wealth with the poor, is to steal from them, take away their livelihood, and it's not ours, it's not our own goods we hold, it is not our own goods we hold, but theirs. It's like the gift of love, it's not ours. To the degree that we hold it to ourselves, then we lose it. To the degree that we give our love uh, to others, to that degree we keep it. Love is not ours. It's been a gift to us through baptism. And to the degree that we share with others, to that degree we keep it. And to the degree we keep it, to that degree we lose it. Yes, so those in your family who are without love. You know, I was thinking of so many teenagers who are now becoming shut-ins. There was a study in, in Japan about the kids, the teenagers, who are not developing uh, communication skills, but are staying home with uh, play stations and television, and they're, they're becoming shut-ins. Like we have the elderly who are shut-ins, there's a great, great number of teenagers who are shut-ins, who never leave the house. They have to stay with the TV and, their, and the PlayStation. They don't develop skills. And one of the biggest problems in Japan now is the problem that there are more elderly than young. And the kids are not getting uh, uh, married. And many of them, now we have women working, and they don't want a, a large number of children. They want to keep working. So Japan has similar problems that we do. And by the year 2050, there are only going to be 85 million uh, Japanese. So immigration is absolutely necessary to keep that nation alive. Yes, when we think about it, when we become shut in with love, uh, then we lose the love. Yes, we see that baptism is the launching pad for us becoming full members of the church. How do you become a full member? Through baptism, communion, and confirmation. Then you're an adult member. Otherwise, you're really just a stop and shop a member who just comes to buy a few things. But to become a really, really uh, full member of the church are through those three sacraments. So <coughs> baptism is not a formality. A lot of like I have my kids baptized, and they have no idea what it means that is sanctifying grace in God's love. Yes, but if we go through an act that is profoundly touching for our existence, we can't baptize myself. Remember when you were getting married, and you, brought, you were nervous, and you brought your boyfriend home? You brought your boyfriend home. He didn't just walk in. Or when you brought your, uh, your future wife home, uh, 
she didn't just walk into your family. She had to be invited into it. So I cannot baptize myself because I need to be welcomed into a family. I can't welcome myself into your family. You have to welcome me in. Well, that's why we can't baptize ourselves. We have to have others to be what filial participants to bring us into this family of God we call the church. Baptism is God's invitation into a family. With baptism, we are immersed into the inexhaustible source of life. That is the death of Christ. Because of the death of Christ, symbolic when he went into the water, water is a symbol of chaos, and he came out with the new life of God. Yes. Because of his love, we can live a new life, much longer than 100 years. We live a love for, for all eternity. I called up somebody yesterday who was 104 years old in our parish. Now, most of us aren't going to be here. I live physically that long, but we are going to live a lot longer for all eternity because of baptism. Today we ask the question, why was Jesus baptized? He wasn't God. He wasn't a sinner. He's God. Why would he be baptized? For two reasons. Once he wanted to identify himself with each one of us, to win humanity. He wanted to be identified with us in our humanity, so he became human, and he acted in a very human way. He wanted to be uh, identified with us. And the second reason he was baptized, he wanted to lift us up into his level for all eternity. And that's what we call sanctifying grace and God's love. And so what happened, the uh, heavens opened and the, the Father descended upon him and the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. A dove is really someone, some, a, a bird that's very, very gentle, a symbolic of the gentleness of the Holy Spirit. And, and the Father says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Well, through your baptism, Jesus, God the Father is saying the same thing. This is my daughter. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Why is he so well pleased? Because the life that Jesus had was the life of the Father, of the Father and the Holy Spirit. And the life that we have is the life of the Blessed Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So God is very pleased with us because we are holy. We have God's life. We got God's love. You know, as I recommit myself uh, to the parish for another year, and I hope a lot longer, depending on how long uh, my health is, so I keep on getting up at 5.30 in the morning for the treadmill. So as long as uh, you're com I'm committed to this parish for another year, to give myself, to the degree I, I serve, to that degree I am committed. And through baptism, all of us have been consecrated. We've been consecrated as priests, so we come to celebrate come to marry, we come to bless. And we are consecrated as prophets to be a witness of Christ's life within us. Someone's got to recognize Christ's life in us through the love that we show. Somebody says, well, I'm not going to talk about politics or religion. When somebody doesn't want to talk about religion, that means they don't have much within them. But when you have aware of the sanctifying grace of God's life in you, you want to share that life and God love. So just like I'm reconsecrating and dedicating myself for another year in the parish, I'm asking you to go back to your baptismal vows where you are consecrated to God as a priest and a prophet, to be a witness of Christ in your life. And so be filled with life. And someday check out when you were baptized and how old were you when you were baptized. But in the meantime, let's stand up now and we can, we can dedicate ourselves to our baptismal vows that are in the bulletin. Please pick up the bulletin. On the center of the uh, bulletin, let us renew the promises of the Holy, the Holy Baptism by which we, work, we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God and his holy Catholic Church. My dear parishioners, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. You renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. You renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. And do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Amen. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, suffered death and was buried, 
rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Our responses, Heavenly Father, renew us. <laughs> 